Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how you can model a centrifugal compressor wheel in Autodesk Inventor. So we're not going to go into the design of these at all, it's mainly just going to be a CAD tutorial about some of the tools and techniques you can use to create something that looks like this. So these are used in turbochargers and micro turbine engines. Uh, this is a model of one that I used in my turbine I built a few years ago. If you want to see that video, then I'll leave a link for that in the description below. So with CAD, there's essentially many ways of achieving the same result. Uh, so this is just going to be one way you can do this. I think it's one of the easiest ways as well. So yeah, so let's get started. So we're going to start by creating a 2D sketch and then choose the plane you want to sketch on. So this is going to be for the main profile that we're going to revolve to create the main body of the compressor. So I'm going to start by creating a center line, and this is going to allow us to easily dimension the component and revolve it around its center axis. So click on the line and convert that to center line, and then I'm going to add a coincident constraint to the center of the sketch. So next you want to sketch out the main profile. So just do this roughly first and then we're going to constrain and add dimensions to it afterwards. So we can now add our dimensions to this. These are just taken from roughly from the compressor that I used in my turbine engine. So we're going to set the overall height to 34 millimeters and make that fit the screen. Then we're going to set the height between the bottom of the compressor and the bottom of the spacer to 3 millimeters. This space is what presses against the inner race of the ball bearing. So we're going to set the thickness of the edge to 1.25 now we need to constrain the middle of the compressor to the center line. So choose a coincident constraint and snap it to the center of the sketch. Then we're going to set the width between the bottom of the, the inside of the spacer to 8.5 millimeters. And you can see this is where the center line starts coming useful. We set the outer edge of the spacer to 12 millimeters. And then now we need to specify the top, and that's going to be 17 millimeters diameter. And if you look at the bottom, it tells you how many dimensions are needed to fully constrain the sketch. This is a useful thing to keep an eye on. And you can also drag the sketch to see where it can still move. So as you can see here, we need to specify the angle of this chamfer here. I'm going to set that to 140 degrees. Now going to snap the base to the center of the sketch again. And then set the overall diameter of the compressor to 66 millimeters. Final dimension is the overall radius of the main body. And we're gonna make that 32. So the only thing we can move now is the center line, but we're not really bothered about that. Uh, you can take away a constraint by snapping it to the middle again, but that is the end of the sketch. So I'm just gonna tidy up the dimensions here. If you wanna pause the video and copy it, then now's a good time to do so. Then click on Finish Sketch, fit the profile to the screen, and then now we're gonna create 
the solid body from this using the revolve command. So click revolve, it should automatically find your center line and body, if not you just have to select the two. And then there we have our solid body of the compressor. The last thing to do on this bit now is to create the hole which connects the compressor to the main rotor. So select the hole command, then you can go in the feature tree and choose the origin of the sketch we did. This is a pretty quick way of selecting the point where you want your hole to start from rather than having to do another sketch. So drag that through, make it through all. And then we're going to set the overall diameter to 6.35 millimeters. And when you've done that, click OK. After that, we can now start work on the blades. So we're going to need two planes for this initially. So select the offset from plane command and set the first offset to minus 4.5 from the top surface and then we're going to need a second one that's on the that starts at the top of where the curvature of the profile starts so again choose offset from plane choose the bottom surface and set that offset to negative 1.2 and these are where we're going to sketch the start and end points of the blades. So, so far things have been pretty straightforward but it starts to get a little bit more involved from this point so I'm going to go through that in part two of this video. So thank you for watching so far and I'll see you in the next one.